Welcome aboard Rigsby Reviews, episode 48. We're here with Ed Rigsby and Jonathan Rigsby. The Rigsby's. We've got some, some goodies for today. Yes, we do. Some Frey Ranch, some whiskey, and uh, some scars as usual. Some rye whiskey. Rye whiskey? Rye whiskey. So we have... Man, bottled and bond. We have... Strong stuff. We have H. Upland, Nicaragua, A.J. Fernandez Heritage. Now, uh, I know you like the Nicaragua cigars because the Nicaragua cigars tend to be a little bit stronger, a little bit bolder, a little bit more oomph to them. Perfect. Kind of like the, uh, the some of the Davidoffs and so forth. Nicaragua has got just a little more of that. So this H. Upman, um, this five pack is just under 50 bucks if you go to Cigars International. Boldness, it's, um, it's uh, four out of five. It comes in Churchill, Corona, Robusto, and Toro. These are, as you might guess, Robusto. Interesting thing, all of the tobacco in these is Nicaraguan, with the exception of the Brazilian Nita Fina wrapper, which um, in Brazil, that is the, the top quality wrapper. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, Upman uh, has been in existence for 175 years. They were a big name in Cuba. Uh, for you know a million years um, and um, Upman started working with AJ Fernandez down uh, right about 2017 and this particular cigar was introduced in the Tobacco Plus Expo in Las Vegas in 2022 so I'm looking forward to that and oh you know what we should do so I can get a screenshot here bring me closer Oh, up. Okay, just smile. No, you gotta hold still. Okay, okay that's good. Um, and the uh, the Fry Ranch, that bottle, uh, if you buy it at their website, it's sixty two ninety nine. If you go to Total Wine and More, it's fifty four ninety nine. There you go. Um, interesting with with this one. Okay, this is their rye. This is straight rye. It's made with a hundred percent winter cereal rye. So in other words, there's only one rye grain in the whole mash bill. And they wanted to create something with this rye that um, by only using one mash bill, it, 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 the taste wouldn't be affected by others. Um, it's aged for five years, and you mentioned that it was bottled in mine, so that means it's 100 proof. Yeah. And it did, win, it did win double gold in the San Francisco World Spirits competition. So why don't we? Um, what are you doing there? Okay, now we did a review there. before uh, on the Fry Ranch bourbon. Yeah, that and was that, one that, of our first reviews, actually. Yeah, and that was a that was I think eighty five, eighty six. It might not be up there because I actually looked. The most recent review we did got pulled. The most recent one got pulled. Mm -hmm. Did it really? Yeah. You tagged me in it like yesterday, I think, a day ago. And it uh, pulled it. It uh, at least at least it pulled it from Facebook. No, oh, I don't know. The okay. community okay. guideline. I don't, okay. know. I don't understand. We're yeah. just sm smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. We're not talking politics or anything. Yeah, maybe we need to. Maybe who knows? Anyway, Ooh, this thing, this it's beautiful. Thing's got weight on. Weight too. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Well, look at the bottle. Look at look at the bottom of the bottle. Look how thick that yeah. thing is. I mean, it's like it's there's like seventeen pounds yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, Dennis Ream bought me this, and Dennis Ream brought it. That's good. And Dennis Ream brought it last summer for my birthday party. So oh, nice. it's been almost a year. This has been sitting waiting to be reviewed. He bought it at Wade's Wines here in uh, Westlake. I do know that's where he got it. Yeah, I really like the top to it. It's pretty cool. You just, you're done with the drink. Take this part out, the cork part, and it's just like a cool little. Cool little something. Yeah. Well, little medallion. Cheers. Cheers. As you know, we always try to use a Glen Karen snifter first to get really a good sense of what the whiskey is going to taste like. And then later we'll put it uh, on ice in a rocks glass and it will be a completely different experience. Bottle number 1,437. And they're out of Nevada? Mm-hmm. Oh. 
They are they're in Washington um, for some No, no, no. They're um, obviously Fallon, Nevada. Fallon, Nevada, uh, outside Reno. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. It is. Mm. There wasn't as much of a <laughs> anticipated. I got a cough afterwards. Stronger. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's got a nice finish. Good spice. Um, it, it it's plenty good for sipping, and uh, Fry Ranch says that uh, you know it should hold up in, in a cocktail like an old fashioned or Manhattan or something like that. Okay. Nice. Okay. I haven't had whiskey in so long. <laughs> Probably since the last time we did a review. Oh man. Because when I was oh, here last time, oh, we're we drinking didn't do rum. Review. Yeah, we're lots drinking, of rum. We're drinking a lot of rum. Port. Yeah. Some port. A lot of port. Pretty good. Yeah. That was really good. That's dessert. I'll let you uh, take that first pick. Go with the middle one. Upman. Humpman. Upman. H. H. Upman. I wonder if people call him the Humpman. H. Upman. Humpman. Well, hey, you're probably going to get our review taken off by saying that. No. You don't really know it. With YouTube. My God, no. with those people. Amen. So here is the H. Upman. If you look at it in a cigar store, you'll see that it's got a dark blue uh, wrapper with uh, gold lettering. Pretty easy to recognize. Do you want a um, punch or a V cut? I'll do whatever you do. I'm going to do a V cut. That works. I'll do it. Okay. Get this off. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Easy draw. Yeah. Yeah, give it. How much V cut I gave it? Oh, wow. Give it this much V cut and real easy draw. Trying to take it off nicely. So I started taping these into a little journal if I like the. Oh, yeah? I only, I, I only have two in there. I've got a journal from about five years ago your brother gave me. Yeah. It's. I kind of ran out of ran out of pages, so I ran out of interest. Got the opposite problem. All right. So we were at the Dodger game a couple nights ago. Had a good time. Dodgers won naturally. They Kick the Rockies' butts, all you Colorado people. Sorry. Yeah. And we got commemorative 1981 World Series rings. Yeah, that was very cool. I gave mine to one of my employees. Oh, did you? Yeah, she, her and her family are super into the Dodgers. Yeah. And I, then it was cool, but I don't really have any use for it. So oh, yeah. She was bummed. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, maybe I should give mine away. I mean, I wore it at the game, but yeah. You're never going to touch it. You worked on that finger. Yeah. They say you might put it in with your uh, challenge one. It's not going to fit. Oh, you're trying. It's kind of big, yeah. The, the, the ring, the base ring that it sits on is a little bit big. It's sitting on top of my challenge coin case right now. Hmm. Nice, easy draw. This is amazing how easy this draw is. Yeah. Nice construction, although mine cracked a little bit here. Oh, wow. That's a significant crack. Yeah, but it, but it's down. At, but it's the crack is down at the end, so it really doesn't matter. I got a little one right here too. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, well. Maybe it's not. How long has it been in the humidor? Well, or you know, I, I just changed my humidor over. Mm -hmm. I, I, as you know, I took all the boxes out. I put all the cedar uh, trays in, and there may be a, a humidity change. Because those cedar trays, um, I didn't wipe them down with distilled water. I put them in, and, yeah. and so maybe a maybe a dramatic humidity change. Okay, you know something? It doesn't matter. This smokes just fine. Yeah, it's good right off the bat. Mm. The amount of smoke it's got! Holy cow! Good smoke, nice flavor. It said it's four out of five bold, so it's not quite at that heavy, heavy peppery that I know you like. Um, it's got a funny pepper for my like, yeah. liking. It's also not a cigar in probably like two months, so mm. it's uh, it's funny. 
Yeah, it's, it's too it, hot in Arizona to smoke a cigar. Yeah, it's got a lot of spice. Well, I was probably guy smoking cigars in Atlanta, but I was at the speakeasy. So if you're ever in Atlanta, I found a place called the um, the Red Phone Booth, and out, out on the street, it's just a red phone booth, like an English phone booth, and you just um, call the hotel concierge, you know, ask him around, get the phone number, dial the phone number in, the back opens up, it's just this gorgeous, gorgeous speakeasy lounge, great, uh, great bar, lots of high-end drinks, the food was really good. Oh, it was full, full mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I went back three times. You know, I just wow. Yeah. How long are you in Atlanta for? A week, like five five nights, maybe five or six nights, something like that. I don't think I've ever been to a speakeasy type place. No, I have to. There's one in Hollywood, um, La La Discar Discarza. It's in Hollywood. It's Cuban themed. Yeah. Um, I'll have to zip over there one of these times when you're here. Okay. Maybe next month. Because that, that speakeasy, um, you, you go up. I don't know if they let you in the front door. Usually you go up on the side door, you, you go up, you go in this little office, they open up an armoire, you go through the armoire, you go across the catwalk, this big, massive area down below, people dancing. It's a whole eating. experience just to get in. Yeah. And then, um, then connected to it is the rum bar. And you can smoke in their rum bar. It's, I mean, there's a door between the two, but I mean, it's connected. They've got a, um, they sell cigars there too, and and they got got like a million types of rum. It's good. After we had rum a few weeks ago, I'm into rum, nice rum. Yeah, I was almost going to do a rum today tasting, but I really wanted to try this uh, Fry Ranch, and uh, yeah, I wanted the strongest cigar. Yeah, you want some. Some Something with some. Yeah, I picked the cigar first, and then I actually I picked the cigar first, and then I was looking around for which uh, which spirit I wanted to wanted to taste. So it's um it's burning, kind of even, you know, kind of even, um, and um, it's got a really. Uh, Nice taste, a lot of spice to it. I mean, I'm getting a fair amount of spice. Yeah, I like that. And um, and as I said a couple of times already, I mean, just it's such an easy draw. So it means that it, it's constructed really well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, A.J. Fernandez in Nicaragua, they've been making cigars for Romeo and Juliet, uh, Monte Cristo, and several others. We did the um, uh, review on the uh, old world, new world, new world, new world. New world. New World Dorado, and and uh, their Diesel, their Ave Maria, their Man of War. I mean, AJ Fernandez just does a really really nice job, and all of the tobaccos that sit in this were from the AJ Fernandez um, collection. Hmm. Was this one from Cigars International? Yeah, Cigars International provided this. Thank you. Thank you, Scars International. And uh, hey, if you ever go there, you know, take a screenshot of this and, um, you know, get a little something special for you. Oh, get a screenshot. Got a screenshot. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, Scars International is really good about uh, supplying us with uh, with cigars. Yeah, you give them your, I love little, them. your little wish list and when they arrive. Give them a little plug. You know, it's... Um, uh, I've only been to to their superstore in Pennsylvania once. Joe Priscilla took me over there, and um, that was an experience uh, because mostly they're an online seller. But but they've got like three or four superstores now around the country. One in Pennsylvania, one in Texas, a couple other spots, mm -hmm. and it's just this. No, the entire downstairs is a humidor, and you can smoke there, and the entire open air upstairs type thing leather chairs all the way around they got a bar you know and it's just it's just a massive massive cigar lounge i, I don't very well. i don't know if there is any there any large. hey i just read also um in um um the, the cigar aficionado newsletter or easy um at the bacaro 
in uh, Goleta. They call it Santa Barbara, but it's Goleta. It's is now it's now a cigar lounge. I've never heard of this. Yeah, one. no. So Bacara is it's it's um, it's uh, it's Rich Carlton. So oh. so it's it's a, a Marriott brand, and it opened up as is just the Bacara, very expensive, mm -hmm. and then it ended up moving over to the Marriott brand uh, to uh, um, Ritz Carlton. Uh, there, there's a cigar lounge they just opened just within the last few days, and it's Gohiba Lounge. And it's not indoors, but it's outdoors. And it's, it's they kind of- uh, Is it on the, near the water? Yeah, they've jettisoned all of the um, uh, you know TVs and all that stuff. And they've got nice seating, big long fire pit, it's cool. got a view of the ocean, so yeah. I want to get up to uh, the Vicara and check that out. It's open. It, it said um, Wednesday through Sunday, I think like four to ten or something like that. Cool. Well, when I'm out here one night, you can meet me in Camarillo and go from there. That'd be fun. I mean, it's a push to get out there, but. Yeah, maybe even uh, maybe just get a room at the, the Montecito Inn and, uh, and then come yeah. back in the morning. And don't have to worry about it. You know, I'm liking this cigar a lot. It's um, it, it's got a nice feel to it. It's it's not soggy or anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's drawing very well. It's got a good ash. The, uh, the wrapper is looking good. I mean, even though that little bit of a, a crack in the wrapper didn't matter. Yeah, it's tasted um, good the entire time. Yeah. And we're not even like at no, the sweet spot no. yet. So, hey, why don't we try the, um, uh, I'm gonna turn my, oh, the water came out. Okay. Uh, whiskey with ice Let's try with some ice. Yeah, let's see what it's, uh, let's see what our thoughts are with ice. Okay. Things are so cool. Yeah. Ice ball. Ice ball. Although we shouldn't let anybody see that we're using a Jack Daniels glass. Oh, whatever. Yeah. It's all good. Go ahead, just pour yourself some up. I'll take an extra puff or two while you're doing that. Cool. There you go. Okie dokie. Just a cool bottle. Yeah, really. <laughs> they make really cool bottles. So sturdy. Okay, now I'm going to go back and give it a, a straight. Well, the cigar holds up to the whiskey, or the whiskey holds up to the cigar, however you want to put it. They pair well. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Right. That thing cruise around a bit. Changed quite a bit. It's sweeter. I'm, I'm not. I'm not getting Whisper quite me. the spice. No. The, the the chill takes a little bit of the spice. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. It is a little bit sweeter. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have the same bite at the end. Yeah, either. but that makes sense because as you cool it, the uh, it, like that uh, the Austrian, uh, the, the first American master sommelier, explained to me about temperature, and so like it, the this bottle is probably about 8, 70, 80 degrees. 70, 70, 80 yeah. degrees. It's really too warm, and yeah. then now we're getting it down to that 50, 60 degree, yeah. which is 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 the perfect spot. And then you know, the, the sweetness is really coming out. Mm. Mm. So I should say, uh, I don't know if Pat McCoy or Dennis Wasserman is watching this, but hi, Pat. Hi, Dennis. Our, our two top fans. Our, our, two, our two guest reviewers when you're not available. Yeah. Except for Dennis is sitting up there and... Uh, and uh, Tulik Research Station up in uh, top of the world in Alaska. Uh, he'll be back in a month, I guess, or something like that. Twenty hours of sunlight, daylight. I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Never been to Alaska yet. I've only been there once. I went to Anchorage when I was running around the country doing um, workshops for Dun & Bradstreet. Yeah. They had me do a public seminar. And then also I did a workshop for at Elmendorf Air Force Base. That's a SAC, Strategic Air Command Base. Uh, the sergeant let me sit in one of the jets. I can't remember if something, you know, I, what do I know? And he let me get in and he says, don't touch anything. <laughs> because it, it, it was a hot jet ready to go. Yeah. And, uh, that's cool. Yeah, it was really neat. Yeah, yeah. That's the closest I'll ever get. Yeah. But I went on the, um, I went on the Portage Glacier boat ride. And it was interesting because I took my, my warm leather jacket mm -hmm. and everybody else didn't. And as soon as we got close to the glacier, it was like freezing, like, like an air conditioner just blasting at you. And I'm out on the front of the boat on the bow, the only one with got a nice warm jacket on everybody else went inside. Just enjoying yourself. Yeah. Had it all I, to yourself. Oh, I was digging it. Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. More to the story, if you're going to go to the, any glacier, uh, take a jacket. Yeah. When I got there in May, it was like I, I finally got into the taxi, go to the hotel. It was like 11. Totally bright outside. People playing basketball when they go to the park and everything. It's like, holy cow. It yeah, like, it's got to be weird to get used to yeah. at first. Yeah, I was up there for a few nights. It was fun. It was fun. So, um, hmm. I think this one might be a little bit strong for your mom. I got this one here if your mom would like it, but it's, it's too strong for her. Yeah. Way too strong. She doesn't really smoke. She has like a couple a year. No. Maybe. I probably corrupt her and she probably has a couple more than a couple a year, but yeah. Something like Bad that. boy. Bad boy. Okay. Yeah, I, I gotta say I'm 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 really pleasantly amazed at just how easy the draw is. I mean it, it I don't know, is yours is do you have an easy draw oh, too? Yeah. yeah. I'm not an issue. And 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 how much smoke we get. And 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 it's a good scar and the flavor, now. yeah. And you know they're not expensive because, like, I was looking at Cigars International, their pricing. It was like the five pack was like forty seven, forty eight, forty nine, somewhere okay. in that range. Ten bucks a cigar. Yeah, just 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 a hair under ten bucks a cigar. Yeah, and, and and yeah, I mean, now if you were to buy this at a brick and mortar store, you'd pay no less than fifteen. Yeah, uh, probably more. Just, I mean, especially if people don't smoke a lot of scars a lot, spending 20 bucks on a scar is not a big deal. No. Hey, uh, so, so I mean, that's how much it costs to go see a movie. Yeah. So last week in Atlanta, so I was at the American Society of Association Executives Convention. And so I was, one of the favorite, whoop, there goes the ash. The favorite thing for me to do is cruise the expo. Just love cruising the expo, chatting with people, just meeting people. Yeah. And um, the second day I cruised by the, the Tampa Bay booth. And this gal's handing out, she's got a big box and she's handing out cigars. Oh, and they were awesome. they weren't Churchills, they were Presidentes. Is that even bigger? Yeah, nine <laughs> inches in a, in, a, in a crystal tube. I didn't know they were bigger than Churchill. Yeah, yeah, okay. Presidente. And um, I grabbed one for me and, and my friend um, Jim Thompson, mm -hmm. who's an association executive in North Carolina. And uh, we went over to the, um, the, uh, the red phone booth, yeah. the, the speakeasy. Smoke those big monsters in the afternoon. Yeah, it was great. Then they have something that that I'm not. I've done it before in my bar, but I didn't even know there's a name. It's called an affinity barrel. And so when an affinity barrel is, and I didn't know this, it's they've got an actual barrel, you know, yeah. and uh, oak barrel, yeah. and they put different uh, bits, leftovers of of whiskeys. Uh, from like the upper, last bit of a bottle. Yeah, upper end stuff. And then they, they track, they keep track of what's in it. So, and I can't remember whether I paid $20 for a two ounce or $28 for a two ounce glass. I mean, it was expensive. But um, but it was um, it was really, really cool because there's about five different upper end whiskeys. And it's like, I'll never have this again. Oh, the mixture, yeah. Yeah, it, it was just, so, um, so now it's like, oh, maybe when I, I mean, you know, I'm 71 years old, and I finally find out what an affinity barrel is. Um, was it good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would assume like they're not putting like a scotch with a rye or mm -hmm. something. It's like the same kind of whiskeys. Yeah, together. they were. 
Um, and, That'd be weird. Yeah, I and, well, I don't know if they put, I don't know if they mixed rye with bourbon or not. I can't remember. The gal was going through the I whole mean, that thing. might be okay, but I feel yeah. like if you, if you mix You're not gonna put scotch in American there. whiskey with, no. I guess, British whiskey. So. Well, not British, scotch. Well, Britain. Don't, don't, don't let the scotch. Don't tell the don't tell the Scotch you call them British. They get upset. I thought they're part of the. UK. They are part of UK, but Ireland's but, the one that's not part of the UK. Yeah, but the, the but the Scots don't want to be called British. Okay. Remember, it's the United Kingdom. There's England. There's Scotland. Neither the Twain shall meet. Okay. It's, uh, they're not Brits. Excuse no. me. Mm -mm. No, those are fighting words for those guys. Okay. The uh, island. Yes. Uh, whiskeys and the the, uh, the, the, the Great Britain. Continental yeah, whiskeys. The, 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 How about that? Yeah. So it, it was very, very good. It was very neat that it, it, they age it too in, in a barrel and kind of it, it melds together and blends. And that's oh, actually a charred barrel that they put it in. Yeah. So now it, it gets aged even more. A little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was very. very you know what I should do? So my my in laws they got me. Um, I think it's it's like a little barrel. They, you know, you put vodka in and it turns it into whiskey. Oh, yeah. So I could use that Oh yeah. for an affinity and oh, just yeah. over the next, I don't know, 10 years, just slowly put Yeah, because all the stuff you get from Santan. Just put just put the different Santans in there. Ooh. Yeah, and you'd, you'd have a Santan affinity barrel. Yeah. That would be the cool thing to do. Because then it, yeah. you know, I'll keep track of it. Maybe I'll bring it to the distillery. I'll let them know like five years later, like, so this is what I've been doing. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. We should set up a time if you guys want to enjoy this with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I like would, it. That would be very cool. Um, you know, because in the past, in my bar, I've got a, a really nice decanter. And the, and the gal was saying, you know, a lot of people in their bar, they have a nice decanter and they put little bits and pieces in it. But they did it actually in a barrel. And, and then I never tracked what I threw in. I just threw bits and pieces of whatever. And yeah. um, but so now okay. it's, it's kind of like. Yeah, I think I'm, I found a use for that now. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking, hmm, I wonder if I want to buy a barrel, a small, like a, a one-gallon barrel. You can get one like Amazon or something. Yeah, no, I'm sure it'd be easy to get. Yeah, um, probably like 50 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. because, because the fact that it is charred, and you know how they put, um, like, um, Makers 46, they throw uh, extra staves in. And I think Santan does an What's extra stave. What's a stave? The stave from the barrel. The, each piece of the barrel is called a barrel stave. Okay. So they would take p extra staves that have been charred and put it in the center of the barrel. Oh, it's floating in there. And, and it, it just it is more surface for mm. the, the whiskey. Yeah, that's why the uh, okay. Baker's 46 is a little bit car more caramel-y. Okay. So at, at the, the, the Red Phone booth, that's what they were doing. And they were, and it was, it, it was act adding a little bit more character to it and it was, it was stave stave yeah well oh, you know because that one uh from santan sacred, sacred stave. stave yeah okay yeah mm -hmm. i had no idea what that was mm -hmm. that makes a lot more mm -hmm. sense now yeah yeah i learned myself something um that i didn't know that was that was very cool so yeah if you're in atlanta or close to atlanta downtown it turned out it was too funny like i because i'm with my leg right now, I'm using the cane. So I called an Uber. You know, it's all one way streets. It took, mm -hmm. took me all the way around. Blah, 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 blah. And then right when we're going up the hill, just a little bit, a little short hill, he goes, Your hotel's right there. I go, I could have walked. He goes, Yeah, you could have walked. I go, The bellman told me it was too far to walk. So then I walked back. And then the next time I walked, next two times I just walked there. It was like two blocks or something? Yeah, it was like <laughs> three blocks. And it was like uh, yeah. from the uh, Marriott Marquis. He probably saw you with the cane. Yeah, saw me as a real gimp. Yeah. yeah, well. You gonna be off the cane soon? No, just found out yesterday. They took an X-ray. The uh, the the the, uh, the femur that that uh, that I broke. That broke. <laughs> the, the, it's the bone's moving. So Shit. I've got an appointment with a trauma surgeon Thursday, and they're probably gonna go back in, do some more work on it. Maybe uh, go in and put another rod in. Well, not going to put a rod, but they might put a plate, or they uh, they or they have Screw a wrap. Or something. Yeah, and so because it, it really hadn't. I, I mean, I, I should. Because it should have been very yeah, good by now. Yeah, I shouldn't be using the cane by now, but and because when I was in there, yeah, yeah, yesterday at the doctor's office, I told the gal doing the X-ray, say, do me a favor, take a shot of just the femur, and she goes, okay, and so and then I looked at that with the doctor, goes, oh geez, it's moving, so. Um, 
It's terrible. Yeah, so I'm probably going to go back under the knife. Oh, well, there we go. I guess they can if, probably if go through the same scar. No, nah, he's got to do a different scar. So he's yeah, got to do a different scar. I'm going to skip my left leg to be so scarred up. But um, when I see him Thursday, if he wants to do it, it's like, let's get this thing done. I want to get go. I want to go skiing when December comes. Come on, let's get this. Let's get this puppy fixed. Yeah, it's a bad puppy. Yeah. Yeah. So your mom was saying my leg looked kind of bowed. And, well, yeah, because the bone it moved a little bit. So the part that's fused is good, but the other side. You, you got boned. Yeah, bow, I got boned. Bowed. Bone? A bow bowed. Uh, it's okay. I'm a dad now. I can make dumb jokes. Yeah. Yeah. So, dad jokes. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a whole new, uh, a whole new odyssey for me to see what the heck they're going to do with the leg. Um, but it's like, oh, what the hell? Hopefully that, that solves it. Yeah, if if, if they would have left the rod in and not done the hip replacement, then it'd be no, it'd be fine, it'd be no, be no problem. But so, yeah, it's too bad they had to take the rod out. Yeah, because yeah. like yeah, your yeah. femur would have been extra strong for the yeah. rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't have broken. Well, mm -hmm. I guess you could fracture it. But. I get, yeah, and it was interesting with the uh, the titanium rod in there. It never set off the X-rays of the airport, but with the new hip, I just I now I just walk up to him and I just point to my hip and I just go right into the X-ray. I don't even go through the magnometer. Is going to the x-ray and then every time they pat me down the guys are like very apologetic and i go hey man i'm used to it go for it just pat me down let's get this weird. when i went through the security in phoenix a few days ago they like wanted to like check my lower back super random hmm. i'm like okay I'm, i was wearing pretty much what i'm wearing right now shorts shorts and these shorts have like built-in underwear like maybe there's something in like the fabric of the underwear who knows who knows you know, I mean, one at one time at um, at TSA, I was at talking to somebody, uh, one of the TSA guys. I forgot what airport, but I said something. I said, "Hey, you know, in LA, when I left LA, this didn't set things off." And there's a gal, and she says, "You know, we intentionally make every airport a little bit different as far as the the uh, how they the setting of the magnometer and mm -hmm. some of their policies." They said, "We do that intentionally to throw you guys off." Interesting. And it's like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's like, okay, you know, that's fine. Yeah. So you never know. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so I thought I was going to be in good shape wearing Skechers with no steel in the shank and the, and the sole. And then, you know, my hip sets it off. So. Mm. I always have to take my shoes off. Get TSA approved. I went and then nothing ever happened. And then I'm just like, well, it depends honestly, on I don't really care because... I fly out of smaller airports and it's quick either way. So yeah. it's like, oh, whatever. Yeah, I've got I have the clear thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, the clear thing. Sometimes okay. I don't even use it because there's no line. Yeah. It's quicker not to even yeah. use it. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't had to take my shoes. Every once in a while I have to take my shoes off. I wear a pair of shoes that's got a steel shank in them. So that's why I try to just wear Skechers at the airport because there's no, but now with the hip, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay, so we're about. I'm guessing two thirds, something like that. This is uh, for me the sweet spot right here. It's um, it's doing quite well. I'm um, I'm enjoying it. Let me get a little bit of the. Uh, yeah. Around the same. Yeah, about. Damn, I'm actually going slower than usual. You're, you're further into it. Hmm. Oh well, that's okay. So, I'm saying on this one, the H. Upman. Um, the Upman. <laughs> this is a this is a definite go go try them. This is a most definite. Yeah, go try I will put the. Do you like this one? Yeah. What are these called? The label? Or not the label. Yeah, it's a label. Oh. Yeah, a label. There's not a cooler word for this. No, just a cigar label. Or cigar wrapper? No label. They call it label. wrapper. No, the wrap. I, no, the no, wrap. This that's, is this that's is the wrapper. Tiger. This is the wrapper. Anyways, I'll keep this one and add it to my collection of two. Now my collection is three. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All the other good ones you can't remember what they were. It's okay. Yeah, that's really good. And the um, you know, I'm really liking the uh, the Fry Ranch uh, uh, rye. 
Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I mean, it's interesting. Hundred proof. Hundred uh, percent. No, both. It's a hundred percent winter cereal rye. So it's one kind of rye. Hundred percent. The, the entire mash bill is with one kind of grain, which is which is pretty unique. That that's not Usually common. It's a mixture. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that is uncommon. And then yeah, it's bottled and bonds. So it's a hundred proof, and it's um, it's great. It's great. Okay, well, I guess we can say adios to everybody. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Uh, great cigar, great rye whiskey. Good times. Good, uh, good chat, and uh, we'll see you next time. And, uh, oh, by the way, if you're still here, don't forget to uh, like um, and subscribe. And hit the notification. And hit the notification, and, uh, you know, just in case you want to get a little something extra, go with that. Okay, guys, catch you next time. Bye-bye now.